want to be so busy in my own world achieving my goals that I'm not <coughs> appreciating what God gave me. So I do that all the time. Whenever she comes around, I always look at the whole picture. And that's what I was telling her. I said, is there anything wrong with me adoring my wife? So I walked away and I walked away. Probably something else I don't know, but go ahead. Well, no. <laughs> no, I walked away and the Holy Spirit arrested me. And he showed me that I was really uh, looking at the situation through the eyes of my past or how I see myself. So perception is so vitally uh, important that you understand that whatever, whatever happened to you, your past, you can be looking through the lens of, uh, lenses of another person. That person's not even the, the, the person that was in the past. Right. So, you know, we got to make sure that we're looking at the reality and not the perception. Mm. Reality versus reception or perception. It's, it's important. See, see, again, single or married, we got to get past the compromise. You know, I did a teaching compromise. Was it compromise, chaos, and consequences? You know, so anytime you compromise, you know, there's going to be consequences. It's compromise, consequences. And depending on how you handle the consequences will determine if you're going to experience chaos. And so sometimes we're pretending stuff has not happened when we've compromised or living in compromise. And so we, we, depend, we pretend that there's no consequences. But there is consequences to compromise. And it affects your future relationship or the relationship you're experiencing now. Because the relationships thrive off of uh, authenticity, genuineness, and covenant, like being true, being all in. And you can't do that when you haven't allowed yourself to heal from some things. You know, what she was saying is a lot of times we, we, we go into our own protective custody and we're playing off of our own world, not the reality. And that's not fair to the person because they don't have that picture. They don't know, like, you know, we've been in situations we didn't know what the other person was thinking. It's like, okay, I have no idea why you're responding that way. And we generally are confused. Mm -hmm. Because you're playing off of a picture that has nothing to do with the reality. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But you're expecting the other person to understand. They don't even have that picture. Mm -hmm. You've been hiding it for the longest. And that's dangerous to live, uh, live in a secret. Mm -hmm. Secret is dangerous. Because it's going to keep flaring up and stealing the vitality of your relationship. So if you can't be vulnerable enough to trust the person with all of you, you can't benefit from the fulfillment of a communion. You're just kidding yourself because there's not a communion. You're hiding. You're not even there. <laughs> so how is it a communion? You would have to be there, right? <laughs> the two would have to be present. So it starts when you're single, but it, it, the momentum picks up in the covenant. That's why something that the young couple said, you know, you got to leave that baggage behind. And you have to allow yourself to heal and to grow and to move forward into experiencing the covenant. All the little pet peeves, your, your accolades and all that stuff, they ain't got no weight in the covenant. Amen. Don't nobody care what degrees you got. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't might care that you got a promotion. They care, you know, it affects the bottom line. They care about that, don't get me wrong. But as far as this, mm -hmm. this is beyond all that. Mm -hmm. Th those things are valuable accomplishments and goals. We have them and we celebrate them in our marriage all the time. We're excited when, so when each one of us are doing things, but it's in addition to. But if you spend all your time trying to prove your validation, See, that's, that's, that's your protective custody, as opposed to just flowing together, mm -hmm. growing together. It's, it's, it's just so important. You know, you, uh, we, have to, we talked about the other day, we have to display the cracks. It helps us to maintain intimacy. As my wife says, intimacy you see. See, because that hidden life is only going to be hidden temporarily. And, and, and how could I say this? When you hide, it's almost like having either emotional or uh, uh, fantasies and different like things, having romance, romance outside of a covenant. That's only going to corrupt your covenant. No matter how you look at it. I mean, you may go, don't nobody know. <laughs> okay, y'all that's married. You know when something ain't right, don't you? 
you know when there's, when there's a, a disconnect, don't you? So come on. The person that's created this connect, know, you know when there's a disconnect. So we have to start to, to not tolerate covenants, but we have to grow and to harmonize with covenants. Our relationships, even, even our friendships now, some of us, you know, some of us misunderstand. You know, I don't think he likes me. And sometimes it's like we never ask the question. So what, uh, what we try to share in counseling premarital and even to relationships with friends is to consider, number one, uh, assertiveness and active listening. Assertiveness is speaking the truth of love. So what that means is if, uh, if your wife does something that hurts you, you don't react in offense, you share how it affected you. You don't assume, you don't love me, Denise, that's why you did that. That's an assumed intent. Actually, once you make that statement, get ready for an argument. Because she can defend that all day. Because that wasn't her intent. She loves you. But if you said, Denise, when you shared that, that cut me. That really hurt. I, I really felt bad. She can't defend that. Because that's the effect. Mm -hmm. she can, now, she, she has a choice at that point. Go, oh, sweetheart, I didn't even know I hit you like that. No, I never meant to hit you like that. I apologize. Or she can go, grow up. Too bad, so sad. At that point, you at least justified to be upset, but God would still tell you to forgive her. But, but you understand? But we don't do that, do we? We'll spend a whole conversation on assuming the intent. And you assume the intent based on how you feel, not based on the other person at all. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's perception. The, the other person has nothing to do with it. It's just, this affected me this way, and I know you know better. Based on what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And then the person will be telling you, you know, you know, you did this on purpose because you don't care. You're going to be arguing all day. You just, no, actually, what we talk about, you just want to be mad. You just want to be mad. Because you don't want to understand. That affects your communication. And, and, and it's the females as well as guys, but, you know, I have to learn it. Like, babe, when you did that, now the, now the tough part is when you tell the other person you're hurt, they're going to feel bad that they hurt you. And the reflex, they may defend what they did because they know they didn't, they didn't intend to hurt you. But you got to weather the storm and at least tell them this was the effect. We do it all the time. Babe, now when you said that, sometimes I hit her like this. I was like, so what was your goal when you said that? <laughs> Cut you up. No. <laughs> because we, we actually had a situation. We'll, we'll get, you know, we try to be transparent. So we, uh, we, this was, we was in Ohio and we went out to the grocery store. So I went in the grocery store, you know, I try to do without, but you know, I like gospel music. I went and bought a iTunes card, you know, so just to get some music to listen to. So we, we're walking into the car, walking to the car, she says, I smell food. <laughs> now some of y'all know my wife, so, so <laughs> y'all probably understand that. So, so, I, so I was like, oh, okay. I said, it's probably coming from such and such. You know, I'm, I'm doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it's just probably coming from such and such. Now that, that was a hint. Yeah, that, that was, was a hint. hint. But, but I, ain't, I didn't get the hint. You know, I'm just like, oh, it's probably coming from such and such. So then I'm going to open her car door. She says, we probably could have got something to eat if you didn't get that music car. <laughs> 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 so like, I'm thinking to myself, huh? You know, so, so I'm walking around to get in the car. And I thought it through. So when I got in the car, I said, babe, now, when you said that, what was your intent? Was you trying to, like, crush me because I got a music car? <laughs> she said, no, 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 I apologize. I don't know what I was thinking. So we drove home. By the time we got home, she's thinking through my question. She said, babe, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, why did I get upset? Yeah, because I said, I'm thinking to myself, why did you present a contrast? Why didn't you just ask to get something to eat? Like, it's not like I rejected you. And then you're like, see, you rejected me because. I said, I didn't even get a shot. You just skipped to, you know, the contrast. It wasn't for the music card. We could have got something to eat. I said, why couldn't we do both? <laughs> and she was like, wow. She says, you know, I just really didn't think through that. I said, yeah, just, I said, let's look at the relationship. When have you ever been rejected? And the tough thing, the tough thing about it was, what she thought through was, Okay, I've never been rejected, she says, but, but I think she realized I don't want to even take the chance. Because I was hungry the other day. <laughs> so so, so, so this, is, this is what she said. She, this is what she said. She says, you know what? I get it. She says, 
We as women, we expect y'all to read our minds. We do, y'all, don't, don't we? And we get offended. Let me speak to that if you don't mind. <laughs> We get offended when they are not sensitive to our needs because our thought is, if they love me, they would be so in tune with me that they would know what I'm thinking, how I, how I feel, that because that love is so deep, you know how we want that love to be so deep, you know, that they, they feel me. And honestly, I was expecting them to read my mind. And then we as women, get, uh, we get upset when we have to tell them what we want. <laughs> you know, we want them to think about it. And honestly, what I learned Amen. was Amen. he would have to be a woman to understand what a woman needs. I mean, and what a woman feels. Oh, look at, look at the men like, yeah, yeah. Get them, get them, get them. No. But, but it's the truth. And, and we as women, you know, like we go to work and, you know, one of the coworkers got flowers from her husband. I wish my husband would do. I mean, immediately we're thinking, well, dad, how come he don't do that? Well, he don't do it because he don't, he's, he would have to be you to know that this is what you like. Now, it's nothing wrong with telling your mate what you like. But we as women get offended because they don't do what we like. Look, we gotta, like he always said, help me help you. Right. Don't be, don't, 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 don't discredit the love that he has for you because he's not thinking like you. At the time. Let at me, the time. Let me share to that. Yeah. Like, oh, when you guys buy new computers, you get this new computer and you're excited about it. It's just one problem, and then you go to type in a document, and it doesn't come up. Why? Because you haven't purchased the operating system yet. So you have to put an operating system in for it actually to, to, for you, to meet your demands. And then let's say you get the operating system, but you, you're looking for a, di a, a document that you typed before. Well, until you put that document in the computer, you can't draw on it. Right. That's good. So when we first get together, we just empty computers. Right. You have to, you have to give us what you want to place demand on. Like, so I get her flowers. <laughs> I, 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 I go for walks. I do things that she needs because she's put it in the computer. Mm -hmm. But... In North New Jersey, 139 Goldsmith Avenue, wasn't nobody t downloading the things Melanie like. <laughs> and it ain't just what women like, it's what Melanie likes. It's, it's, some things are what all women like, but trust me, Melanie has her own little customized desires, right? <laughs> so I, wasn't, I didn't have that. 